Percy was soon mended, but one morning Thomas woke feeling ill. The Fat Controller sent him to the big station to see if they could make him better there, but it was no use. Edward must take you to the works, the Fat Controller told him. Then he went to see Duck. I want you to go and help Percy and Toby while Thomas is ill, he said. Donald and Douglas will do your work here until Thomas comes back. Duck was delighted. He knew Percy already, and it wasn't long before he'd made friends with Toby, Terence and Bertie. Percy, who was still cross with Thomas, was glad to have someone new to talk to. Even Annie and Clarabelle were impressed. Such nice manners as they told each other. It really is a pleasure to go out with him. They soon made Duck welcome, and he laughed when they told him how Thomas had once left their guard behind at the junction. When Thomas came back, Annie and Clarabelle told him how well Duck had managed. Though Thomas was jealous at first, he was so pleased to be home that he soon forgot it. But he didn't forget the affair with the coal. But he was careful to keep out of his way. The works had left Thomas's handbrake very stiff. It made his brakes seem as if they were on, when in fact they weren't. And Thomas's driver and fireman soon learned to be extra careful. But one day, Thomas's fireman was ill, and a relief man took his place. At the junction, Thomas ran round Annie and Clarabelle. While his driver chatted to the station master on the platform, the fireman fastened the coupling. The driver told him about Thomas's break, but unluckily he had forgotten. When he had finished with the coupling, he joined the driver and station master on the platform. Thomas simmered happily. In the distance, Henry appeared. Not long now, thought Thomas. At that moment, Thomas felt his wheels begin to move. He tried to stop, but he couldn't without his driver and fireman. He tried to whistle a warning, but he couldn't do that either. The guard shouted from the platform, but that did no good. The guard, driver and the fireman were all stranded, and the passengers were left on the platform staring. Thomas, Annie and Clarabelle gathered speed out of the station. The empty coaches shrieked as they rounded the curve, but Thomas, with plenty of steam, kept on going. The signalman at the junction soon realised what had happened and sent a message along the line. An inspector prepared to stop the runaway at the station near the airfield, where Harold the helicopter stood ready in case of emergency. But Thomas was still going much too fast. Quickly, the inspector climbed aboard Harold and they took off. I must get there in time. I must be anxiously. Below, Thomas was tiring. I need to stop. I need to stop. He panted wearily. Annie and Clarabelle held back as they went uphill. As they neared the station, Thomas saw Harold land and the inspector run towards the platform where he stood waiting. This time, Thomas entered the station slowly enough for the inspector to act. Running beside the train, he judged his moment, jumped and scrambled into Thomas's cab. Then he put the brake hard on. With a sigh of relief, Thomas stopped. The inspector mocked his brow. Phew, he remarked. Wearily, Thomas agreed with him.